guys, um, today I decided I was going to do a little reaction video to a video that I found on my lists. It's Christian who is going to talk about why he thinks Christians should not celebrate Halloween. I know that was a huge thing with me growing up is that I always was back and forth on that because my parents, you know, sometimes let me do Halloween, but a lot of my Halloweens were spent at church doing like a harvest festival and dressing up like good, nice characters, not vampires and demons and stuff because in my house those things were real and we weren't allowed to actually do anything that would, I don't know, make us more prone to Satan's attacks or something like that. So today we're going to look at a video called Why Christians Shouldn't Celebrate Halloween. And I don't know, I just thought it'd be fun to do a little reaction video to it because I had grown up in that and I know how that affects people growing up and how when you get older and you're an adult, it, your, your mindset can change. And I just thought it'd be fun to do. So if you want to come along with me on this ride and watch this video, uh, go right ahead. Just very quick, if it's the first time that you hear my channel, my name is Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle, where we preach biblical truth in a balanced way. What do I mean with this? Well, a lot of churches, they just focus on motivational messages or there's a lot of false preachers as well, false theologies, false doctrines. And so we have a watered down church in a lot of countries. <laughs> watered down church, false doctrine. I always find that funny when Christians say that. It's like, oh, because they're not actually preaching what my church thinks, then they're watered down. But really, everyone has a different opinion of what God is, and everyone has a different opinion of what the Bible actually says. So there's not like one core thing. They say that the, the Bible's like their core values or whatever, but people interpret that in so many different ways. Saying that one church is watered down and yours isn't, you can't say that because everybody has a different opinion and a different interpretation when it comes to the Bible. I mean, if it was really God who sent the Bible down to us and gave us all these things, we wouldn't have this problem of Christians, certain Christians being watered down Christians because it would be straightforward and say, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. And there's no room for like people to interpret it in different ways, but that's just not how the Bible was written. I just find that interesting and kind of goes in that whole mentality of us versus them because I know when I was a Christian in the church, it was very much like Catholics aren't Christians, Mormons aren't Christians, even different sects of Christianity. They were saying they weren't correct because they didn't follow exactly what the church you were in followed. And it just goes to show that the Bible is not an infallible book and it can be interpreted in different ways. And I don't think an all knowing, all loving God would make it so it's so confusing that Christians have so many different ideas about what God wants. But here we're going back to the Bible. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it. Also click that notification bell here so you won't miss any of our future videos. Now, your question, should Christians celebrate Halloween? Well, a lot of people, including a lot of Christians, they just think about the activities. They like dressing up as ghosts, witches, or even demons, or some other sort of spiritual or mythical creature. They do it for fun, to trick and treat, or to go to parties. Now, on the other hand, some people celebrate Halloween because they want to remember the dead. That is actually what Halloween was created for. Some Christians even go to church and they light candles on the graves of those who passed away already. The Wikipedia has this to say about Halloween. Halloween or Halloween, a contraction of All Hallows Evening, also known as All Halloween. All Hallows Eve or All Saints Eve is a celebration observed in many countries on 31 October, the eve of the Western Christian feast of All Hallows Eve. It is interesting too to look at this and say certain Christians will say you can't celebrate Halloween because he's talking about how it's supposed to be like 
a remembrance of the dead and stuff. And you know, they do that in Mexico too with uh, the Day of the Dead and things like that where you remember and All Hallows Eve was supposed to be in remembrance of like the saints that went before. And Protestant Christianity is very against like saints or any of that stuff because they think that's worshipping a human being and making them an idol. Halloween to me is not celebrating the dead. It's just, it's fun and it's just people dressing up and pretending to be things that don't actually exist. But when you look at the Christian perspective where they believe that these things actually exist, maybe not like vampires, but I mean, Christians actually believe, I grew up in a church where Christians believe that witches and magic and demons and things like that actually exist and actually can cause you harm. So when you look at it from that perspective, they're really trying to nail it into you that this is not something you should do because it gives Satan glory and it gives glory to people being dead. But I don't think there's anything wrong with remembering the dead. I think that's an important part of life. Like everybody's going to die one day. And I think that it is very important that you celebrate life that someone had and you don't forget them and you pass down stories of them and let people know who they were because that's how those people stay alive in your life and that's how they stay alive in other people's lives and I think saying that celebrating death is satanic is a huge jump a huge leap but Christians will look at it and say oh no that's how it's supposed to be you're not supposed to celebrate the dead you're supposed to celebrate the living which is interesting because they think if you're dead, you're in heaven or hell. But if they think you're in heaven, then why would we not celebrate? Why would we not celebrate the fact that we think this person is in eternal bliss with the God that we believe saved us from the hellfire that he created in the first place? That's definitely something to think about. It begins the observance with All Hallowed Tide, the time in the liturgical year dedicated to remembering the dead including saints, hallows, martyrs, and all the faithful departed. So Halloween was a celebration to honor or remember the dead. It was called All Hallows' Eve. But many people can trace it back all the way to the pagans, specifically a Celtic pagan celebration called Samhain. Now this was basically a magical harvest festival that prepared people for the winter that was to come. It was not Christian at all. Um, it was used to worship specifically other gods, pagan gods. God questions that orc says this. So the reason Christians are so against the idea that you worship other gods is because they think that they have the only God. And when I was being raised in the church, I was always told that other gods were just Satan or demons trying to make people think that the true God didn't exist or that he wasn't the only god that could be worshipped. So basically, like, they were turning other things into idols. It's just something that Christians don't want anything. They don't want a part of that because they think it opens doors to demons and to the fact that you could do something that could make you possessed or allow things into your house that you wouldn't want there. But... Now that I don't believe in demons and ghosts and things like that, it just kind of seems ridiculous to me. But, I mean, we live in the 21st, 21st century and there's still people who believe in superstitious things. People believe in ghosts still. People believe in demons. People believe that there is a literal heaven and hell. They believe that the earth was created in seven days with magic. <laughs> in a time when we have science and history and archaeology and all these things that can prove that what this book says isn't true people are still going to cling on to it because they don't want to give up the idea that this might be the only life they have and like i've said before in my other videos i think that's a waste of time and it's a waste of your life but i think we as humans want answers for everything and we're not always going to get those answers. And that's really hard for us because we're people that are curious and we're always going to be seeking the answers that we want. But that doesn't mean we're always going to get the answers that we want. And I think that's the hardest part 
of letting go of religion and letting go of superstition because it gives us answers even if those answers don't make any sense. People would rather have answers than have something that's going to make sense. I think as long as we don't have those answers, people are always going to cling on to something that can give them peace in those answers, even if the answers <laughs> aren't great. You'd rather have an answer than not have an answer. So when farmers brought livestock in from summer pastures and people gathered to build shelters for winter, the festival also had religious significance and people burned fruits, vegetables, grain and possibly animals as offerings to the gods. In ancient Celtic stories, Samhain was a magical time of transition when important battles were fought and fairies cast spells. It was a time when the barriers between the natural world and the supernatural were broken. The Celts believed that the dead could walk among the living at this time. During Samhain, the living could visit with the dead, who they believed held secrets of the future. Scholars believe that Halloween's association with ghosts, food, and fortune-telling began with these pagan customs more than 2,000 years ago. Now remember, in the 800s after Christ, a lot of the pagans became Christians, but their customs still survived, and they merged it with Christian holidays. Now listen carefully. The Catholic Church celebrated All Saints Day on the 1st of November and All Souls Day on the 2nd, but there was a problem. These days were too close to Samhain, so they didn't like it because, of course, Samhain was a festival for pagans, right? Celebrated other gods, not Jesus Christ, not God. So a lot of people believed what they did is they chose to merge it and call it Halloween. Now, of course, today there are also people who see Halloween as the day before All Saints Day. So they remember who? Martin Luther and the Reformation. So they celebrate religious freedom. What you've got to understand about Halloween is it changed a lot over the years. And different cultures and different religions see Halloween differently. Now, yeah, some groups celebrate Satan. Some just party. Some remember the dead. Some dress up. Some carve pumpkins. Some play divination games. Some play pranks on people. Some tell scary stories. Some watch horror films. And some want nothing to do with it. But the question remains, should Christians celebrate Halloween? This is really interesting because, you know, he's listing all these things that people do on Halloween. And it's like, yeah, everyone's allowed to do what they want. Everyone should have that freedom to worship who they want, to do whatever festivities they want to do, and to just enjoy that time. And Christians are so against anything. <laughs> I, I feel like sometimes Christians are against anything that, like, gives you joy. Like, if you have joy in anything other than God, you're like, a horrible person. And I guess being an American and understanding freedom as being able to do what you want within the bounds of, like, the law. You know, I don't see anything wrong with people who want to carve pumpkins. I don't see anything wrong with people who want to worship Satan. Although most Satanists today are not, they don't actually believe in Satan. That's a whole other thing that the church buys into is this idea that Satanists are people that actually believe Satan is real and they worship him. Where most of the Satanists I know are not like that. They are actually atheists. They just use Satan as kind of like a way to rebel against the church and show the church it's almost like trolling the church because they know the church will freak out if it's if they have anything to do with Satan because Satan's the enemy of God. So they use that to troll the church and make people upset and angry and to show people that Christians aren't the only ones who are allowed to have freedom. And that is a big thing in America is that Christians aren't the only ones who are allowed to have freedom. Everyone should be allowed to have freedom and... I think that's really hard for Christians because they have their mindset that freedom is only in God and only in you pursuing God and worshiping God and obeying God. If you're not doing those things, then you're not living the life that God wants you to live. And if you're not living the life God wants you to live, then you can't be happy. You can't have joy. You can't just go do something if it doesn't give honor to God. People are allowed to live their lives and I think the way I look at things now 
yes, people are allowed to live their lives. If people want to worship Satan, let them worship Satan. It's not bothering you. It's not doing anything against you. If he's your enemy and he's God's enemy, then your God is, you know, this all-knowing, all-loving being. He's going to take care of that in the end, according to you. But you also have to think about the fact that just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you get all of the freedoms and nobody else does. So many people in America sit there and they whine about other religions taking over and forcing their religion on them and making them learn about different religions and making them learn about other gods. But Christians do the exact same thing and they try to push their agenda. And if they don't get their agenda pushed, then they whine about it and they're so upset about it and they they shouldn't be. There's no reason for them to be. Everyone should be allowed to have a voice. And everyone should be allowed to have freedom. And freedom means not just if you're a Christian and you obey God. Freedom means anyone in America. You know, Satanists, Muslims, trans, gays, lesbians. You know, all these people that you fight against that you don't want corrupting your children or corrupting whatever you are claiming to be corrupt you know these people are not living their lives because they want to just go around and throw their middle finger up at you and tell you to back off because they're doing this to upset you these people are living their lives the way that they want to live their lives and they should be allowed to do that and I think that's a frustrating thing right now in at least the country I'm living in because there are a lot of states and a lot of places that just don't believe anyone should have freedom if they don't follow the Christian God. And that's just, that's not okay. What does the Bible say about Halloween? Well, you can read through the whole Bible, but it doesn't say anything about Halloween because Halloween did not exist back then. But the Bible does say plenty about staying away from all forms of evil. It tells us not to talk to the dead, not to be part of witchcraft or worshiping any other gods. For example, Leviticus 20 verse 6 says, If a person turns to mediums and necromancers, whoring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. Isaiah 8 verse 19 and when they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the necromancers who chirp and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? And 2 Chronicles 33 verse 6 says, And he burned his sons as an offering in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and used fortune telling and omens and sorcery, and dealt with mediums and with necromancers. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. So we clearly see that the Bible, God, is against all these dark things. Now, if you want to look at Halloween, and you want to remember the day of Martin Luther, the Reformation, and you want to celebrate our freedom in Christ, then that is fine. But that does not mean that you're celebrating Halloween. You're just celebrating freedom in Christ. But you need to let the Holy Spirit guide you in this, because we know that Colossians 2 verse 16 says, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink, or with regard to a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. And Romans 14 verse 5 says, One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Now with that being said, you should also know that you must never partake in anything that is evil. Stay away from strange occultic things. <laughs> stay away from anything that we tell you to stay away from. That was a big thing growing up too as I was never allowed to. I mean I couldn't even play Dungeons and Dragons. That's how strict of an upbringing I was in because they believed it was used to call upon demons and you had to call upon demons in order to win the game and 
now I know a lot of people who play Dungeons and Dragons, even Christians, because it's not what Christianity says that it is. It's what Christianity claims that it is. And that's the biggest problem with Christianity is that they don't actually know what a lot of these things are. They just claim to know what they are. And since someone told them, this is not something good, you should not be doing this, then they, they just believe them. And I think that goes along with the dangers of authority figures and allowing them to tell you how to live your life. Because a lot of people in the church, they don't actually read the Bible. They don't actually know what God has said about certain things. They don't know where the Bible even came from. They are completely oblivious to anything that is not told to them in church and Honestly, I think being a pastor or a preacher can really put people into a dangerous situation because if that pastor or that preacher decides they want to use their power to manipulate people or whatever, like they're going to do that and they will interpret the Bible the way that they see it and they will use that against people in their church. People in their church might not even know that it's happening to them, that they're being conned. And I'm not saying every pastor and preacher out there is a con artist. I'm, I mean, there are a lot of pastors and preachers who honestly were raised in this religion. They truly believe that what they were taught is the truth and that the Bible is the truth and they're just doing their best. But at the same time, the interpretations that those pastors put out every Sunday of the Bible, they're not the Holy Spirit like they claim it is. It's very much their interpretation. It's their mindset. So one pastor could preach the same chapter as a different pastor and they can get two different interpretations of that. And that really can be damaging to people because it's not something from this all-loving, all-knowing, powerful God. This is literally an interpretation from the mind of a person and people mess up people have flaws you don't know what's going on inside of other people's heads and you don't know why they're doing what they're doing and their desires and what they want from being a pastor or a preacher so i think that is something that you really have to look into because that idea that you just listen to authority and believe authority and trust authority has really caused problems in the past, I think, for a lot of people and has led people down dangerous roads that they wouldn't have been put on if they had done their own research and they had made sure that what they were being told is true and what they believe actually lines up with reality. And I think in the church, that's just, those things aren't happening because they're not allowed to happen. You're not allowed to question authority. You're not allowed to question the Bible. You're not allowed to question God because he's the final authority. And if he says you can't do something, you can't do it. But there's no deep diving into that and saying like, well, why does God say not to do this? Or why does the pastor say not to do this? It's that, that deep thinking and that curiosity and that ability to have the critical thinking you need so that you don't get sucked into these ideas and just follow them blindly. They call us sheep in the church. You want to be a sheep, not a goat. It's very, very prevalent in the church that you just listen to authority and you do what they say. And if you do that, you are a sheep because you're not actually making sure that what you're being told and what you're being taught and what you're being addressed as is true. So that is something I think I struggle with now because I don't trust authority as much now because I know that they're people and they're flawed, but I also know that I have to protect myself from that and make sure that what I am looking into and what I am letting my mind focus on is true and not something that's just gonna put me back into the church because they want me to go back into the church you know never partaken it alone or with people 2 corinthians 6 verse 14 says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship 
has light with darkness. What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God, which is you, with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you. Now, personally, I can't understand this. I cannot understand how some Christians can dress up on Halloween as monsters, as witches, as mages, or even as demons or the devil himself, because it is evil. I guess because some people don't think that that is evil. They think it's just fun and that there's nothing wrong with that. People who are outside the church don't see that as evil. And I grew up in a church where there were some people that had no problem with Halloween. It just depended on, it mostly depended on your parents and what they believed and what they thought was right. And some parents really want to shelter their kids from the world. They want to homeschool them. They want to keep them in this bubble or have them go to private school. They want to not allow them to be curious and not allow them to go outside of their one book of truth because stepping outside that book of truth satan apparently is going to get you at every corner no matter where you go he's going to be lurking there and he's going to get you so i feel like that's just a huge cop out though for christians is that if your book was true and your book lined up with reality and your book was based on ideas that we know are true, why do you have to shelter your children? Why do you have to shelter yourself if God is this all-knowing, all-loving being and he knows that Satan's going to come after you and attack you and make you think that he's not who he says he was? God could just come down and tell everyone he is who he is. There's no reason for him not to. This makes it a huge problem because the sheltering thing is not about holding on to truth. It's about keeping you inside of a bubble that you assume is truth and you don't want anything to attack you from the outside. But it just seems ridiculous to me because if the Bible were true, you wouldn't have to do that. Because no matter what you read, no matter what you look at, no matter what you see or think or hear, you're going to know 100% that the Bible is true because the Bible is true. And that's the biggest problem is it's not because the Bible is true. It's because we have evidence that the Bible isn't true and people don't want to know that. They don't want to know that their religion isn't true. And I'm one of those people, I can tell you right now, I spent years keeping myself away from learning evolution, learning archaeology, learning science, learning history. I love learning about other religions and that was a big part of me growing up is just reading about other religions and how they were created and how they evolved and changed over time. But I would shelter myself from my own religion. Because I did not want to hear what other people had to say about it. I did not want to hear that what I was told wasn't true. And I think that's a really hard thing to deal with because when you're raised like that, you want to protect yourself. But once you step out of it, it's freeing in a way that you just can't describe. 